When I go to the supermarket and go to the biscuit counters, I see wall-to-wall arnets and just a few little biscuits on the side. But the supermarkets have actually gone to our guest today. It's Gordon Slater of the Bar and Bay Cookie Company. And they actually want his biscuits to go alongside Arnott's. Now this is a very new development. And it shows us that supermarkets are starting to think that they'll need different sorts of products. It's terribly encouraging to small food producers. And I raise with Gordon, as you'll see, um, the problem that people have when their products are duplicated. And his co products are copied all the time. But his brand and his quality and his research have helped him stay there. Now, of course, the Bar and Bay Company um, exports about 38% of its product. And you know, that's something Arnott's have always wanted to do, but never could do it. Now, I must confess, of course, that Bar and Bay is a very small company, but it does show that there is potential in the food business because people want variety. But you do have to be innovative. And of course, our guest is a bit innovative because he's an orthopaedic surgeon um, and practices that at the same time as being uh, the chairman of the Bar and Bay Cookie Company. Gordon, you're an orthopaedic surgeon. How on earth did you get into the cookie business? Well, it was an interesting thing. We were looking around for businesses for a number of years to buy into and this one became available and it was something that I'd heard about over a number of years and tasted the product and so as soon as I heard about it I went straight down to the bakehouse and it went from there. We bought in and bought a small share and then we started to accumulate shares. And, and you now own the whole lot? Yeah, three years ago we managed to get the whole, uh, the whole show and uh, that was uh, by a process that a venture capital came, company came in and tried to buy the business and we were able to, through a clause in the contract, to buy it uh, instead. So it was a great you know, piece of luck in a way in the end. You know, there's a rule in the food business that um, when you make a product and develop something, uh -huh. immediately you're copied. Yes. Um, uh, what's happened to you? Have people been copying your products? Yeah, we've been copied by pretty well everyone and, and there's every time someone comes out they always produce their you know, their ten flavours or so and, and in that group of flavours will be our top three selling products, which will be, you know, like the Dotty cookie, triple choc cookie and also the white chocolate macadamia nut cookie. So they'll copy them and uh, some of them last for you know, a lot of them go out of business fairly shortly, but the new guys, whenever they come in they always copy those. The thing that we miss though is that we've developed our our flavours over 20 years, so we've perfected them. And it's pretty hard to come up with a, you know, perfected flavours. It takes a, a long time, a lot of effort and a lot of passion. So where have you been selling your cookies? How have you been marketing them? We sell to around about 9,000 cafes worldwide now. Uh, we, we sell through mainly independent uh, organisations, so your local cafe owned by you know, typical small business people, entrepreneurs, but we also have a corporate clients, so we sell to McDonald's and Qantas and David Jones and a whole lot of uh, bigger businesses like that. And you've duplicated that not just in Australia but around the world? That's correct. So over, overseas we've, we sell to Sainsbury, Harrods um, and uh, to a number of larger, uh, when I say larger, like 20 cafe chain businesses over in the, in the UK and we also sell into the US, so we sell into Whole Foods and a a couple of like emerging uh, businesses like that. But you've kept right away from Woolworths and Coles. Up until this point we you have, haven't. that's right, we have. <laughs> <laughs> now you, 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 why that's on right. earth did you do that? We did it for a number of reasons, but it was, it was becoming, and, and it's great that you mentioned this thing about being copied. So in, in Coles and Woolworths we see that a lot of our flavours are emerging and being copied. I'm not surprised. Yeah, and then we got approached and, and we toyed with the idea for about 10 years. Who approached you? Uh, people from Coles initially yes. approached us yes. and said, you know, we'd, we'd like to get your product in and and we were kind of against it, but we, we had a strategy that we'd develop a new brand at some stage, which was the Byron Bakehouse brand, and we'd, we'd modify the product. So it's an individual product styled for Coles to go into the home pantry. And what was it? Uh, well, I'm not talking about that. I think uh, okay. that's a secret at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that means that you're going to go right up against the Arnott's. They've been pretty sleepy at this stage because they've let you creep up 
how will you go against the beauty? Well, I think Arnott's is a great company. I mean, they're, they've been a great uh, Australian company, and I, I like some of their products. Uh, I don't see it as like being directly against them. I think that what I would like to see is that we're, de we're developing a different category. So in Coles, we're, we're a single serve item rather than being in, in where they're playing, which is, you know, in multiple unit serves. So we'll probably be different, I hope. What about when Mr. Coles or Mr. Woolworths comes along to you and says, uh, Mr. Slater, I want you to reduce your price dramatically, um, as they do all the time. How are you going to handle that? I don't know. I think that'll be a tough one, won't it? But, <laughs> well, there's a certain price that we can reduce it to, but we, we're not really in the discount food business. We're, we're in the upper end in the, in the kind of luxury food item category. And so we, we, don't, we won't reduce the quality of our products. So there'd be a certain price point that we wouldn't be able to sell to them anymore, I guess, if, if that was to occur. Because that's the number one on our priority and our brand values is the quality of the product. How do you um, recruit your staff to, to run the bar? All you're baking is a bar and bake? Our bay, we've got uh, three facilities, so we've got okay. one at Byron Bay, we've got one on the Gold Coast, and we've got one in Manchester. Okay. And so how do you recruit your staff to manage these places? With great difficulty. I think like everybody, it's, uh, I think HR is the most difficult thing. So I get involved directly in like every senior employee uh, hire I'll be, I'll be involved with. But we tend to involve uh, H HR companies to help us. We outsource that and shortlist. But with people like in the bakehouse, we do that like up but at you want to know, They've got a bit of taste of the product, haven't they? They do, yes. So uh, they have to, when, the key thing is to think about like the wine industry, we've got to have a good palate. And then once they get in, we, we develop the palate even more. So we, we're always tasting food, always tasting new products that we might want to develop, new flavors. And also, of course, always checking the products that we have that they meet the, the, the standard of flavor that we want. Have you given away your orthopedic surgery? Um, I haven't. I still haven't. work. No, I haven't. I, I tend to like working, I guess. So I've um, spent a lot of years, you know, 15, 20 years developing a, a skill, and I'm not ready to give that away yet. So um, you know, I'm working in Edgecliff in Sydney, and, and I also have a little practice in Albury. So how do you manage the business? How is the business? I know you're the chairman, but how do you arrange the management of the business? Where's the CEO and how does it all work? Right, so we've, the, we've made a big change in the last couple of years when we started in the United States. We sent our, manage, our then general manager here over there to start up that market because he was American, he was the obvious choice for that. And then he got promoted to managing director. And that made a lot of sense for us because to run London from Australia was really hard. It's such a long flight and you know, by the time you get there you're quite tired and then you stay there for a week and come back. So we now run, it made perfect sense for him to run uh, the UK and European operation. And he comes out to Australia three times a year for board meetings and on the phone on other times. And what percentage of your turnover is now exported? 37% is export. Okay, so that's something Arnott's have never been able to crack. Some of the some Tim Tams have exported, but they've never been able to become a major exporter of biscuits. Um, what did you do they didn't do? Well, I think that we, we started off by developing unique flavors and taking flavors that we want over to, to Europe. And I think we just hit a chord with the palate in the UK and, and also now in the US. I think we were, the product range that we have uh, has just really been very popular globally with people whenever they try it. Do you market online? Yes, we do. We have an online sales. We just ratcheted up our, our sales. Uh, we're up 100% last month on this month and year on year, uh, just by revamping our, our website strategy just recently. And I think that's going to be an important uh, strategy for us going forward because it's a very we have 20,000 hits on our website per month. Really, mm. really. So that, um, but at this stage, is, is it a percentage substantial? Uh, not a no. It's not a. It's okay. not as yeah. It's an emerging thing, but still, it's uh, you know, it's a it's an important thing. And when you see the growth, you can see it won't take very long for those exponential sales growth to become a very important part of the business. If your business starts to get bigger, uh -huh. as a result of the supermarkets as a result uh -huh. of the export effort, uh -huh. if you've got the money to fund it? We do. We're, we're self-funding, so we concentrate on our net, and we're very, I guess, scrooge or Scottish in our way that we look at every dollar and every piece of capital we put in, we have to get a very quick return on investment. So we, we don't have, um, we don't have uh, flights of fancy and, and waste money, so we have to be very careful with our capital allocation. 
Have you thought of floating? Well, uh, you, you sort of think about it. It's, it's, to many companies, it's the panacea to growth. And I wouldn't say that we would never do it, but I think probably on our radar would be maybe to take on a capital partner maybe over the next few years if we decide to, to continue on our merger and acquisition strategy. It sounds like the banks have been fairly, um, fairly helpful to you along the way. They Perhaps they like the taste of the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, to their credit, we've had National Australia Bank um, as our major bank over the last, you know, I guess, 15 years, and they've been very good to us. But like all banks now, you know, with small business, the things are tighter than what they used to be. So we've got to get a lot more creative, I think, about how we, we look at our capital uh, going forward, particularly as with merger and acquisition, now we're starting to look at bigger targets potentially, which might be, you know, a bank, a bank funding option might be the way to go with those. Do you, do you own your own real estate or do you, you lease it? We own our own real estate, mm -hmm. so yeah, we, we and, and I kind of like that because I think if you're going to bet on someone, the best person to bet on is yourself. So I, I've got a tenant that, you know, I know they're going to pay their rent every every month. Five years hence, where do you want to be? We'd like to be a global niche player in, in the food industry, and I think we'd like to also be have a number of other top-line brands, so we were almost like a Louis Vuitton of food. That's what I'd like to say. Thanks, Gordon. Thank you very much.